move. Let's bring up Steve. Have a little fade out. As is Joan Rips here with a review of the second week of Beagle Rush's Thursday Night X. -Con. Okay. He actually began the show with a review. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Holy shit. Hang on. There is way too much going on here. Look at this shit. Okay, so I'm here. Then Hi, guys. It's Joan Rips here with a review of the third week of Beagle Rush's Thursday Night X. -Com. I need for the large. I absolutely need. Beagle started the episode by stressing out a bit about whether or not he was prepared for a large landed, which might be coming. I wanted to give you guys some insight on in what goes into deciding whether or not that UFO will show up with a crash course in Strategic Scrying 101 from the Magician's University of Joe and Rips. Every month, the aliens choose which missions to do based on XCOM threat level and alien resource level. XCOM threat level increases the more UFOs XCOM raided last month. Alien resources increase sort of magically by the aliens doing well over the course of the campaign. At the beginning of the campaign, XCOM has zero threat and the aliens have zero resources, which means that for the first month, the aliens plan three and a half abductions, three scout missions, and three harvest missions. We all already know what abductions and scout missions are, so all that's left is harvests. Aliens run harvests when they need more resources, which is very true at the start of a campaign. They pick which countries to harvest from at random, with a small chance to reroll somewhere else if they pick one with an XCOM satellite over it. Because there are 16 countries and XCOM only starts with one satellite, the chance of XCOM actually seeing any of these harvest missions at the beginning of a campaign is quite slim. There's about an 18% chance that XCOM will see one or more of them in March. He gets a little mouthy sometimes, but we like him. We like Steve. He casts spells. He knows things that normal people don't know. He's handy. Beagle started the day with a few black market sales to begin building a fission generator, which will give 8 power once it completes, enough for another satellite uplink, a workshop, and a lab, something like that. Dr. Valen and her invisible team of scientists finished researching xenobiology, and Beagle started down the path to laser weapons by queuing up alien weaponry. This technology has a number of potential applications. The first mission of the day was a bomb disposal council okay. mission. Launch the mission. We're not getting a warm up today. Beagle equipped an urban combat focused team and loaded into the bank map. Garth the Archangel Angelus, please protect us on this mission. After a brief prayer to Garth the Angelus, he began the mission by pulling a pot of sectoids who were joined between turns by a single tall capitalist. Here comes the Thin Man as well. Unusually human in its appearance. He spent the first turn of combat setting up his closer range soldiers to bring their shotguns to bear next turn, and held the enemies in place with suppression from Boganova. Unfortunately, suppression can be a little finicky and frustrating around the edges of line of sight, which caused it to bug out and fail to yield a shot against the tall capitalist, who sped off into fog. Oh, great. I'm pleased this is happening. Jessica burst through the door and, manning a teller station, helped one sectoid make a withdrawal. Kyder satisfied another customer with some explosive interest rates, and Draven provided a final closure of the last sectoid's mortgage. Echo locating. What was that sound? While other aliens patrolled the map, Nagash was able to skirt the outsides of the parking lot and get in contact with the bomb. Disabling it caused additional enemy reinforcements, so Beagle waited until he had picked off the rest of the enemies on the map, accidentally destroying all records of his personal dead in the process, and then took the rooftop before finally disabling the bomb. The subsequent tall capitalists were easy to deal with from the high ground, and the squad headed home with no wounds, a single promotion, a few corpses and miscellaneous other items, and a hefty $236 council reward. I'm a satellite too. With the month about to end, Beagle's satellite uplink completed, and he launched a satellite over Mexico, which commits him to protecting two different continents in April. This means it's a little bit more likely that some UFOs will get away, but it does bring Beagle closer to the powerful North American continent bonus. Your recent results were beyond our expectations, and that is not a statement this council makes lightly. Mwah. Bellissimo! Beagle started building a targeting module at the beginning of April, which I don't much agree with. While cute tactical upgrades may feel like what you're meant to be spending money on, until your interceptors are in charge of the skies, I think you're almost always better spending on more planes than on tactical gadgets. As if to prove my point, a raider showed up immediately afterward and took Beagle's hangar in the US out of commission for most of the rest of the month, then limped off on painfully low health but still in the sky. Bringing this UFO down would have been worth hundreds of dollars and a few levels worth of experience. Picking up a new interceptor is a good idea, but it really needed to be in the hangar already. The U.S. grabbed a few sectoid corpses, and Beagle faced his first mission of April, a heavy abduction in Ogbomo Show. Worry of floaters, thin men, and seekers, he loaded out a very strong team. This will have to do. The squad loaded into the weird, overpass, truck stop, gas station map. Starting at one of the ends of this map is sort of nice to help make it linear and make it easier to pick up meld. Beagle moved forward and pulled a pot of two tall capitalists and their sectoid pad. 
the tall capitalists more or less flanked themselves and got picked off easily by Ohio Yankee and Boganova, while the sectoid only lived long enough to see the wrong end of Cappy's shotgun. Next up were the first floaters of the campaign. Floaters are known for being tough to hit when flying and threatening on flanks, but also for their weakness when presented with any logic puzzle challenging to a three-year-old. A grenade pull from Duke sent them scampering to easily flank tiles, and the pod got mopped up quickly. Four tall capitalists pulled into Fog of War, with two presenting appealing flanks. Boganova converted a kill, but Johnny Lump tried to keep the game interesting by leaving the second alive. Fortunately, their return fire was ineffectual, and they eventually felt a volume of XCOM fire, just leaving a few easy sectoid kills to end the mission. Officer training school, because we got us a sergeant. The mission promoted Cappy to Corporal, unlocking the officer training school, and Beagle's fission generator completed just in time to get it building. That's how fission works. It's kinetic. Chunk Color took out the first scout of the month, and Beagle sent a moderately strong team of specialists and a Lance Corporal to take it on. He was back to the marshes for the second time this campaign, and the mission was promising to be similarly easy, with a sectoid pod offering little resistance and the drones which followed being picked off quickly. So close I could taste it. Things got interesting when Beagle relied a little too much on his line of sight mods and ended up taking a tactical tumble, pulling the outsider inside the UFO. When the command pod on a UFO mission is activated, it calls for help, and a pod of three floaters quickly responded as the outsider hit Draven for six damage. Oh my god! Dice took sick damage herself in an attempt to clear floater overwatch. Don't you even think about hitting me on a dashing lightning, you piece of shit. Beagle and the aliens traded ineffectual turns, but Memestrom and BD were able to steady weapons and combine for good kill the next turn. Yes! And Dice only needed one HP to disintegrate another floater with her shotgun. Oh! It's up, it's all on this, it's all on this, it's all on this! Oh! Just barely we made it! A 24 day wound on Draven and 28 day wound on Dies were not great to pick up, undesirable consequences of Beagle's hasty mishap. The mission rewards themselves were very good though, with 37 meld and an intact power source coming home. After shipping some more sectoid corpses off to Brazil, the scientists finally finished researching alien weaponry and got started on beam lasers. Beagle sold a bunch of meld and a power source for another interceptor. Wait. For another int. Wait. Oh. Rolling in them, rolling in the scopes, bring them in. It's a big podium, it's a big speaker's hall, and they're all here to see Professor Beag speak. Lesson officer 1, fuck aliens. The officer training school completed, but the soldiers still needed two ranks for squad size 1, meaning one more mission with six soldiers, a light abduction in Perth. A team of familiar faces and private first class rooster struck out to investigate the reports. The squad loaded into the back of the paper mill and quickly pulled a drone pod. Overwatch has picked apart one drone, and the other two decided to go for the long game, playing dead in front of Beagle's soldiers, figuring that they'd just do nothing for several months and then come back and say they're their best, uh, drones, in the world, and undress themselves and look at us with those eyes and make us feel... feelings. Beagle was obviously somewhat swayed by their plan, with his next move, an unforced error that pulled another four drones, being so bad that it was persecutable by law in 18 of the United States and Puerto Rico. A couple of comically good grenades brought the drones low, and attacks found their marks, but XCOM's fire was not enough to kill all of them, and the two remaining drones inflicted the first casualty of the campaign, bringing... Oh, what the fuck, Jake? Fix your game. The last pot of three sectoids couldn't do anything, and Beagle came home with just a 17-day wound on Kyder, which 36 meld was more than enough to make up for. To end the night, Beagle brought down his first raid of the campaign, so that's what will be up first thing next week on Thursday Night XCOM, 5pm Pacific Standard Time, over on twitch.tv slash beagsandjam. I've been John Rips. If you have enjoyed the show and want to become a part of making these possible, please check out my Patreon link below the video. Also, I'm going to cast a spell right now, and all of a sudden, wham, four annotations of other series that I've made if you want to check those out. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I hope to see you next week with another review of the next week of Big Rush's Thursday Night XCOM.